So as Manuel mentioned, we are doing a lot of different things at um, F1000. I'm going to talk about a few of these things today. So faculty of 1000 at the moment, oh, thanks, <laughs> is um, we have three different products and I will be talking about two of them, F1000 Prime, which is um, it has been around the longest, F1000 Research, that's where I spent most of my time, and I'm not going to talk about F1000 Posters, I can explain it very quickly. It is a repository for conference posters. If you want to know more about it, you can ask me afterwards. So the first part of my presentation will be about F1000 Prime, and then I'll switch to F1000 Research in the middle. They have, um, they're very different, but they have one thing in common, they both use post-publication peer review. So F1000 Prime started as um, being called just Faculty of 1000, so that's the, now the name of the entire company. We, it was called that because we started with 1,000 faculty members and they wrote recommendations of articles that they just found during the course of their research. Um, when it was first launched in 2002, they were only biologists, so it was um, Faculty of 1000 Biology. In 2006, it was expanded to also include medicine. So those are still the two areas that we cover. So it's very much focused on the life sciences, but it does include um, some things that relate to medicine, like social sciences or um, the chemistry where it overlaps with biology. So it's, a bit, it's very broad. Um, in 2010, these two faculties were merged, so it was just one faculty of 1000, and in 2012 it got the new name F1000 Prime. And there are now a lot more than 1000 faculty members. Um, there are actually 6000 professors and another uh, 5000 or so postdocs and PhD students that help them, so there's more than 10,000 in total. But we couldn't change the name every time a new person joins, so it's still faculty of 1000. Um, and it covers 40 different disciplines within the life sciences. And the articles that are um, reviewed on F1000 Prime are appear in more than um, 3,700 journals. So th th it's, it covers a lot of the life sciences. And these recommendations by faculty members, they now com comprise a, a, a searchable database. That's what you see when you go to F1000 Prime. And there are more than 150,000 records, so there's 150,000 little bits of text written by these faculty members that talk about why they like this particular article. Um, there's fewer articles that are covered because some articles are very popular and they will have multiple recommendations. And their goal is to really to find the best research available. So um, all these faculty members are told when you read papers, um, during, during the course of your regular work. If you see something that you find really interesting, that's what we want you to write about. And the recommendations look like this. Um, you know, looking at um, a page of an article that has 25 stars, and this is added in total from all the different faculty members that have reviewed it. They can give it one star, two star, or three stars, and all of that means they like it. So one star is I like it, and three stars is this is the best paper I have read all year. Um, and then underneath the um, title, you can see the different faculty members that have recommended it, and next to, like, Underneath each, each name, you can see what they said about it. It's just people wor working in labs all over the world, and they have their own jobs going on as well. Um, and they select, rate, and comment on the, the most interesting and the most important research articles in their specific field. And it ends up being about 2 to 3% of published articles. So if something is recommended by faculty of 1,000, um, if, you, if you have written that paper, it's an honor to be included because it's really only up to 3% of the literature that gets covered. And the faculty members can give an article three stars if it's exceptional, two stars if it's very good, and one if it's good. So everything is positive. Um, you can add a classification, so if it's, um, for example, good for teaching, good for using in the classroom, they can mark something like that. Or if it, for the medical ones, if it changes clinical practice, if it means that um, a therapy will have to be changed in the clinic, they can mark that as well, so with little labels. And the text they write is, I, I, as I said, it's short. It's not a very long review. It's just one or two paragraphs of text. 
and it's written to be um, in plain English because our audience is all over the world. Um, I mean, my, my um, first language is not English either, but it is the language in which we internationally can communicate with each other about science, so that's what we use. And the articles are um, ranked by score, so you can see the top articles in each field, and you can say, I only want to see articles in my own sub-discipline, and you can search that way as well. Um, and we'll tell you more about the alerts in a bit. So we have this database of 150,000 recommendations that we've spent over 10 years building. And we thought, okay, what can we do with this? Because right now, people find the recommendations only if they know that this exists, if they go to the site and specifically look for, okay, what's new in F1000 Prime today? What have people recommended? And a lot of people are not using this every day and they don't think about it. They forget that they can go. Maybe they've never even heard of it but we want people to know that these recommendations exist. So if um, there's a couple of, of ways that, uh, things that are built into the system that I'll tell you a little bit about. Um, and it's all based on the fact that these recommendations are positive. So what we have is not just post-publication peer review, it's positive review. It's really highlighting articles that are good, and that's what we want to, to emphasize. Um, and it's still growing, so there's over 1,500 new recommendations coming every month. So how can we use them? So these are the, the different things that we're currently doing. Um, one is we thought, okay, if people are only picking the top 2 to 3% of papers in their field, that means that the articles that are recommended by F1000 Prime they, they form a sort of um, state of the field in a particular area. So our faculty members are also occasionally asked to write um, a review article for um, the own, our own publication called F1000 Prime Report. And that is, those are review articles which um, include a lot of the um, recommended by F1000 Prime papers within that particular subfield. So whenever there is progress in a field and new things are happening, you see a lot of articles in that topic suddenly being recommended, and then it's time for an F1000 Prime report, and you can read the longer report and get a really good sense of what's happening. Um, the other thing we're doing, we have three different ways to really um, use these recommendations to recommend people things to read and tell people, like, hey, this is new in your field, and this is what people are recommending. The first is a smart search feature on the website. Um, I'll show you that briefly on the next slide. Basically, when you go to F1000 Prime, you can say, this is my specialty, and you can give as many keywords as you want. Um, you can say cell biology, and then you can give the name of a particular organelle in the cell, or you can go even more specific and say, I'm a biochemist, and I'm working on this protein, and you put in the name of the protein, and it can get, uh, you can get as specific as you want and you will get recommendations that are related to what you're interested in. Um, we've also just last week, so this is very new, we've launched a mobile app. It's on Android and on iPhone, and you can download it and have a play with it. It's called, um, it's definitely on the iPhone store, it's just called F1000, so you can find it that way. Um, and then I'll show you a little bit of something later that we are um, going to be launching later this year. I'll start with showing you the smart search on the website, just so you can get a sense of what it looks like and what it does. Um, so this is the F1000 Prime homepage, which, and it will look different for every individual person, because everyone is, give, has different interests. Um, I don't actually know what the interests are of this example site, but you can see that when, whenever you go to um, F1000 Prime, you'll have the large part on the left, these are uh, F1000 Prime recommendations in your field. So, short summary, F1000 Prime uses post-publication peer review for the discovery of recommended articles. And these are selected by um, an existing faculty of now almost 10,000 people. Um, and these are selected experts, so it's not just anyone who can write a recommendation. Uh, we have an advisory board of 1,300 um, members. Many of them are also faculty members, like the profile I showed you earlier was someone who was both faculty member for F1000 Prime and on the advisory board of the journal. Um, but some areas we have um, advisors who are not faculty members and vice versa, they are faculty members who are not advisors. But there's a lot of overlap.
No editorial bias. That means that editors do not overrule peer reviewers. We, in fact, don't have academic editors handling the papers. The peer reviewers are the ones who, so the peer review reports decide whether it gets indexed into databases or not. We also um, will publish things like negative results or very short papers that another journal might have an editor say, oh, we don't like this because it's negative results or oh, we, we don't like this because it's not quite in this field. We don't have that. Um, all data are included with each article. I don't really have time to show that in detail, but um, as you might know, uh, several funders are now asking researchers to show all the underlying data for their work. And we're, at, by default, including it with everything. There's one exception for medical researchers. If they have patient data that they don't want to make public, then they don't have to include that, but that's the only exception. Anything else, if you have a figure, and you have to show the data that were used that you used to make that figure. Yes. Um, and the articles are indexed in PubMed, but only after they pass peer review. So when they first go online, they're not yet in PubMed. It still takes a while to pass review and then go in there. So you, you'll be familiar with this, the traditional publishing process, um, which is where you submit an article, and then it goes to peer reviewers. They send it back to the authors or back to the journals and then back to the authors. You need to make revisions and it goes through a few cycles. If you're lucky, it stays within the same journal. If you're not, you get rejected. You go to another journal. You start at the beginning again. So the whole process can take a very long time before you get published. Um, it regularly takes several months and we know of cases where it's taken several years just to go from your manuscript to publication. So it shows you how you can, as an author, make your own decisions on, on some things that you can't usually do. So they didn't have to wait for the reviewer two to comment when they got the first comments. They could immediately make these changes. Transparency to make it more fair, to get less negative comments or less, make less people hiding be behind their anonymity to make unnecessarily negative comments, let me put it that way. Um, but as a side effect, because we have all these public referee reports, um, we actually also recently launched this, which is a, a page that is meant for graduate students and put a lot of examples in there for them to look at. So they don't just see the reports that you got in your own paper, you can see lots of different reviews. Um, and we've set that up, the, the, our editors have picked some of the good referee reports to show, and we've had some, um, some of our advisory board members have given some specific tips. Um, so F1000 Research um, is not a subscription service, unlike F1000 Prime. We are an open access journal, but we do need to fund that. So we actually have um, article processing charges. We try to keep, keep them really competitive. If any of you are familiar with F1000 and you feel confident that you can tell your colleagues about it, you can ask me afterwards about this program because we have... Um, we always need people in France. We have lots of people in the UK, in the US, and all the other countries. We always need more specialists. Um, everything is online, obviously, so I'll just leave this slide up during the questions. So if you want to look at something in particular, you can um, write down the website addresses. But if you just search on f1000.com, you can find everything at some point. So. Thank you.